This is only a fraction of a list of smart home companies that sold everybody cloud-based products and then ran out of money. Or even worse, decided they were going to start charging you guys a subscription for something you'd already bought. This is actual footage of Jeff Bezos trying to get a subscription fee out of me for Amazon Prime Video. And now Amazon are actually saying out loud that they intend to charge for Amazon Alexa. No, I'm not joking. On your screen right now is a quote from Amazon's vice president, a man named Dave Limp. And yes, that is his name and not just how I feel about him in which he was asked, could Alexa become a chargeable service? And he replied, absolutely, and I believe we will. I am Jack's complete lack of surprise. I am Jack's complete lack of surprise. What? So today I figured we would take a look at some astoundingly cool smart home products with an absolutely tiny price tag that don't rely in any way on the cloud and that don't even request that you sign up when you add them to your network. What? Is the sign up process? What? 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 They're, they're not trying to steal your data. Well, this is more of a surprise than when Leia Frenched her brother. I've always known. Nothing was that surprising. Thanks to Broadlink for sponsoring today's video and for sending me their incredibly cheap presence sensor, temperature and humidity sensor, contact sensor, light bulbs, and remote control. These products all work entirely locally, without an internet connection, and in some cases, don't even need the app. You can literally program Broadlink's light bulbs to the remote control directly. And all of their sensors, including the contact sensor and the presence sensor, are actually the brains of the operation and store your routines. Just, just to make that clear, the routine is in here. In this tiny, this, this thing is where the routine is stored. That's crazy. That's crazy. And it's the presence sensor that I am probably most excited about because it's the only presence sensor on the market that I've seen that uses MM wave technology using batteries. There's no, there's no power supply required, making this thing super versatile because I can basically stick it anywhere. You can stick it right up your arm. In the words of the Little Mermaid, the disease. I don't, I don't think the Little Mermaid ever said that. Oh, Jesus. I stand corrected. This presence sensor has batteries in it, right? Doesn't require an internet connection and doesn't require any logon details to get it set up, which makes this the most private and most versatile presence sensor on the market. Question is, is it any good? Well, I have no Zigbee signal in the shed in the corner of my garden, but now I have a presence sensor that can turn a Broadlink bulb on without me having to sign up for another account or add another Wi-Fi device to my network. Because it's just battery powered, I can use a little bit of blue tack and just stick it to the underside of my monitor to turn my desk on every time I sit down without worrying about powering the thing. All the other devices work in the same way. So battery powered, don't require a sign up, and don't clog up your Wi-Fi with yet another device. This is industry-shaking stuff, and Jeff Bezos should be just as scared as I was that time I was in Jurassic Park. Kids get scared. Who wants to be scared? That's just a little hiccup in the power. Yeah, I didn't say I was scared. Yeah, I'm not scared either, boys. I didn't say you were scared. I know. Right. Took hours to make that. Worth it. So the question is, if these things are not Wi-Fi and they don't connect to any kind of bridge, how is it that this thing is turning the Broadlink light on and off? It must be connected to something, surely. An interesting thought then. If I turn off the Bluetooth, the Wi-Fi and my mobile network... Yeah. So, the app isn't happy. It's telling me it can't now communicate with anything from the app. The question is, is that... Uh, is that little sensor going to recognise that I've gone in front of it and turn the light on? Because it can't possibly, because there's no hub, no internet, no nothing. <gasps> what? 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 
That means that this thing contains the routine. So prior to that, I had created a routine in the Broadlink app that said when this thing detects motion, then turn the Broadlink lights on, set them to a particular color and a particular brightness. And when this thing stops detecting motion, reverse all that, just turn everything off. So the reason that all still works is because it's actually storing the routine, as I said earlier in the video, into this thing. I can turn my phone off entirely, but this will still trigger those bulbs. Inconceivable! Inconceivable? No more stupid cutaway get! I hate this channel! I watch it every week and I hate it so much! It would just be perfect if he just reviewed the thing, but he doesn't, does he? Constant cutaway gags after constant cutaway gags is such a waste of my time, I hate it! The sensor kit also comes with a temperature and humidity sensor, a contact sensor, as well as the presence sensor. But Broadlink also separately sell GU10 and E27 light bulbs that can be paired to all of these things, and a remote control that can be paired to the lights too, which offers total independent control over each bulb for brightness and temperature, and can even set colors on the bulbs from red, green, or blue, and they also do a tiny bridge. The Tiny Bridge allows you to connect all of these devices to Amazon Alexa and Google Home should you want to. This means that I can actually start full-blown smart home routines using the presence sensor or the contact sensor in Amazon Alexa, and to test this theory, I created this routine. Gigantic farts. Disgusting! Unsubscribe! It's actually proven really valuable for testing, and we'll come on to that in a second. But uh, I mostly did it because it's funny. Gigantic thoughts. First of all then, not all devices can trigger Amazon Alexa, and not all devices can trigger Google Home. In the case of Amazon, everything works except the temperature and humidity sensor, which Amazon can read in the data, I think, but can't actually use it in a routine. The opposite is true of Google, which can use the temperature and humidity sensor to start routines, but can't use literally anything else. Google, pop us in a bin. Now for the elephant in the room with regards the with regards the presence sensor. The presence sensor is battery powered, and I think the way they are conserving battery is to have it go off every now and again and to only measure short distances. I think its maximum is something like five meters, but to be honest, you really need this thing installed in your seated position. And even then, if you don't move at all, it will eventually go, oh, he's gone, and then turn your lights off. I've set it in the app to a delay of 200 seconds. So if there's no movement for 200 seconds, then it will turn the lights off. And I have spent all day at my desk and it's not gone off once. So that seems to be the trick. I found this out by, by using the, the Amazon Alexa routine. I'd, I'd just be sat there at my desk for a while and then you'd hear gigantic thoughts. That's how I knew it would fail. <laughs> 200 seconds solves this. In a similar vein, Broadlink's routines are very simple. They either turn the lights on if there's movement and turn them off when there's no movement and there's nothing in between. You can't, for example, set a routine that says only turn the lights on if the sun has gone down or only turn the lights on after a certain time at night. It's on or it's off and that's it. You can, of course, get around this using an Amazon routine, but then you're kind of out of the territory of local and private and personal and in your house, and you're reliant on Amazon's cloud. Gigantic thoughts. So the next question, of course, is does it work with Apple HomeKit and does it work with Home Assistant? And the answer is no, sadly not. Bespoke configuration dot yaman fires! With all that said, the bulbs that they do, both the E27 and the GU10s, are really bright and have cool white and warm white temperature settings, which is ace. It's good to have another company in that field. And the RGB colors are great too. On top of that, these things are working locally, as I said, with those devices, if you can find a use for them. And I have found a couple of uses for them already, and I'm sure you will too. 
If you do want something really basic that will just connect to Amazon Alexa, they also do a bulb that can connect directly to her without you having to do anything. You can literally purchase the bulb, and I'll link this in the description too, and when it arrives, it pairs to your network the second it's plugged in. It just works. I'm not doing it. Stop looking at me like that. I'm not putting, I'm not going to do the catchphrase. It just works! If you're interested in buying any of these, then as usual, there are links in the description as to where you can pick one up. In the meantime, this video was brought to you by these incredible people. They're my patrons from Patreon, and without them, I'd still be working in a call center. This week, I am thanking one personally, and it's Stuart Bennett. Uh, Stuart has been a patron for ages, and honestly, the nicest man in the world. His mum's not very well, and he's asked me to wish her well, so Dawn, please get well soon. Uh, these are my Facebooks, and my Instagrams, and my TikToks, and my Xs, and other such social medias. Come and hang out there, we can be best friends. See you next time. You could stick it up your ass. <laughs> oh, it's little tuning pegs work. It's the best. I'm drenched. <laughs>